the baked goods section and we have a lot of gluten-free alternatives for baking. We can now make baking healthier, gluten-free, low glycemic. And so some of the flours I want you to start thinking about, let's say you're making a gluten-free pizza crust, you can use garbanzo and fava bean flour. There is quinoa flour. There's coconut and almond flour. Again, I have to bring up cassava flour, which I highly recommend ordering online. It makes wonderful cookies, it makes wonderful pie crusts, it makes wonderful pizza crusts and tortillas. There's plantain flour. So get to know your gluten-free flours. Look up some recipes for other people so you're not taking a risk and you know exactly which flours you're going to test out and start to restock your pantry this way. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So much of learning to upgrade your cooking is just taking the chance and the time and making it and doing it and then you do it and it tastes good and it's not as much of a risk as you go forward. <clears throat> now when we're talking about alternatives, alternative sweeteners, getting your unsweetened coconut, it's a very healthy food to get in your diet. You can actually make homemade coconut milk very quickly from the raw shredded coconut. My favorite natural sweetener is coconut crystals. So using the coconut palm sugar on the glycemic index of how much something spikes your blood sugar, let's say table sugar is 100, coconut sugar is only 35. It tastes and looks exactly like brown sugar. You're not sacrificing anything except for poor health. So definitely pick up some coconut sugar, start learning what to do with it. For those people who do not have digestive problems, you might be able to handle xylitol, which looks and tastes just like sugar, but doesn't affect our blood sugar at all. It's a zero on the glycemic index. It's a sugar alcohol that comes from the birch tree. About 10% of people it gives digestive problems to you. So if you try it and, it and you get any kind of digestive upset, xylitol is not for you. You're in that 10%. If not, then it's fine to use. It's great to get gum that's sweetened with xylitol where we're not getting those artificial sweeteners. Maple syrup is a nice natural sweetener to have. And then I am a huge fan of using raw honey. It's loaded with enzymes. It's calming to the nervous system. It's a little higher glycemic than coconut sugar, but you can blunt the sugar spike with a little bit of fat. They're now making cassava, which isn't here, but they're now making cassava syrup, which is also low glycemic. You might be able to find that online or maybe they have it in your health food store. So these are a couple of the natural sweeteners that you can start upgrading with. And then here we have nut butters. It's really wonderful to stock coconut manna. This will make anything taste creamier. One of my favorite recipes is a cashew cake batter pudding with soaked cashews and using this coconut manna, blending that up with almond milk, vanilla extract, and sea salt. I, it tastes like a cake batter pudding, but yet it's so healthy for you. So start getting into something like that. Getting your nut butters. I always have tahini stocked. Tahini is to make your own hummus or you can use it as a spread on sandwiches or wraps. It's just 100% sesame seeds, which remember they're super high in calcium and it's just a wonderful, delightful flavor. I always like to have almond butter on stock. Here, this one has cinnamon and maca in it, which is a superfood of a root that comes from Peru that has an adaptogenic balance on our hormones, especially the female hormones. And so finding your sprouted or your raw nut and seed butters is gonna be great. I would recommend staying away from peanut butter if possible. It's not actually even really a nut and it is higher in mold. And so with nuts, and seeds, we wanna keep the mold as low as possible. It'll create a damp condition within the body. Mm -hmm.